What is up, YouTube, Facebook, and anyone crazy enough to watch this video? My name's Connor Krauswick, and this is my friend Zachary Borgel. This is the Industry Boys, baby. Papa was a copper and the mama was a hippie In Alabama she was swing a hammer Price you gotta pay when you pick the panorama She never knew that there was anything more than power. So today we're gonna bring up an interesting topic in regards to the industry that we're in. Being in the service industry, uh, we sell a lot of alcohol, spirits, beer, wine, liquor, all that stuff, and we're gonna focus on the beer aspect right now. So a lot of you have probably heard about the Certified Beer Server and the Certified Cicerone program created by Ray Daniels. Um, so we're going to delve a little bit into the true cost of what it takes to be a Certified Cicerone. Cash rules everything around me. Green, get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, yo. What's step one? So step one is the Certified Beer Server exam. So this is a 101 introduction to the beer industry and pretty much the ins and outs of beer. Mm -hmm. uh, proper service practices, uh, you know, proper glassware, yep. a little bit of the basics of styles. It goes into you know, a beer, clean a glass, a little bit of the brewing process, ingredients. And this exam is a 60 question exam that's taken online and you have a 30 minute time frame to take it. And you have to have a, I believe, 75% or higher to pass. And so that in itself is 69 bucks. So pretty much $70 to be a certified beer server. And a lot of places, restaurants, tap rooms especially, will you know incentivize their employees and their staff and they'll pay for those programs for their servers to take it just to kind of give them a notch up for their certified beer server exam so they know more about beer and they have better knowledge of how to serve uh, uh, the proper beers with the proper foods and what have you. Mm -hmm. You're just creating more value for the market by you know increasing your education even in something as silly as a restaurant job, you know? Believe it or not, we can excel in our restaurant job. All right, Zach, what's step two? Step two is after you've passed your certified beer server exam online and you've spent your $70, you can start studying for the certified Cicerone exam. So it's kind of a exponentially uh, increasing growth of study that it takes to uh, excel and comprehend the information to take the next exam. So uh, from your certified beer server exam, you're going to have about a tenfold increase in study for your certified Cicerone and then a tenfold increase for the advanced and yet again a tenfold increase for the master Cicerone program. So we're not going to go into the last two, we're just going to go into step two. Boom. After you've passed your certified beer server exam, you are going to be tasting a lot of beer. By the time we reach these, we're just like, this is the best. You are going to be tasting some off-flavor kits. You're going to be reading a lot of books. You're going to hopefully get into home brewing because the best way to learn about beer and the beer processes is to actually make it yourself mm -hmm. at home. So, number one, let's go into a few of the resources that are going to help increase your knowledge for the Certified Cicerone exam. Reading materials and books. Um, so the Oxford Companion to Beer is one of my favorite. Uh, it's not a book that you're going to read from cover to cover, but it's going to have a lot of history um, and a lot of scientific uh, chemistry and data that's going to go over the history of beer all the way up through the present that is going to be really good for your knowledge for the exam. What about also, the beer bible? The beer bible is very good as well. Pretty much anything that is about beer craft wise and given there's a lot of interpretation that's misconstrued and swapped throughout history about mm -hmm. beer so you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt give but an example do, of that real quick like maybe with pilsner or quell and well you know there's certain ones who claim to have the original pilsner there's you know various years where they're on heights kaput the german purity law is said to have started in 1516 others say it started earlier others say it started later you know there's uh the history books say that uh louis pasteur um, you know, discovered that yeast was the catalyzing agent to create beer. Others mm. say he wasn't. Uh, some people say that the IPA, the India Pale Ale, originated not in India, but actually in Australia. So you can delve really deep into the rabbit hole with this history. The point is that you're increasing your knowledge in all of those areas regarding beer. Nice. And so then more information. Yes. So now, Brewing Element Book Set. These are fantastic. It is all about the chemistry and it delves super deep into water, 
malted barley, hops, and yeast. Um, I personally did not finish all of these four books, but if you just go through and delve into each of them a little bit, it's going to increase your knowledge all the way around. There are many home brewing books. Again, I highly encourage you to start home brewing. Start with extract brewing. Looks a little bit like Coke. It's definitely got some carbonation. Bottoms up. Hmm. Yeah, that. Work your way up to all grain brewing, start playing around, messing around with certain things, and you'll get better at it and you will learn the ins and outs of the processes. You will mess up and have off flavors in your home brew and you will find out why those off flavors exist and how to fix them. So when you taste a commercial example with an off flavor, you can pinpoint where that flavor came from, from a brewing flaw. And I'd say one thing that's cool about the beer industry is everyone's just so helpful as far as like other brewers showing like their brewing techniques, their brewing yeah. styles. So if you have a friend or a local brewery to go to, you know, just having a conversation with those brew masters about the process, they're excited about it because it's their passion and they just want to kind of let, you know, all the little details that you're drinking like be like a conversationable topic yeah. as well. And also, you know, a lot of these places are willing to give up their recipes and tell you because yep. they're not worried about competition. It's all about collaboration. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, also, off flavor kits. Uh, so the Certified Cicerone program offers an off flavor kit. I personally got mine from the Siebel Institute. So it was 12 spikes that you add to beer and it just trains your palate to train uh, for those off flavors because for the Certified Cicerone exam, there is a tasting portion and you're going to have to differentiate and pinpoint off flavors and the causes within those beers. So it's very very important. Um, moving on. What about like YouTube videos? Oh yeah, and, and also there's a ton of YouTube videos out there, a bunch of free stuff as well, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, where you can learn about, you know, a lot of the history and about these styles and the science, but you have to taste it one-on-one uh, -on -one in person to really get the full benefit from it. Definitely. So to kind of add everything up, let's go through it. The CBS, boom, 70 bucks. For the initial test taken for the Certified Cicerone exam, it is $3.99, so $400. Now, the first time I took it, I passed the written portion. I did not pass the tasting portion. And it is a uh, very, very humbling experience when you go in thinking you know so much about something <laughs> and you walk away feeling like everything you've been taught and everything you've learned is a fallacy. Um, it, it's a very humbling uh, time. But it was very good. So I went back and I retook my tasting portion. I nailed that down and I passed. Um, so for any of you who do want to take the Certified Cicerone exam, do not feel bad if you do not pass, whether it's the entire exam or just the tasting or the written portion. It's extremely extensive. There's no multiple choice answers. It is all fill in the blank and short answer and essay questions. There's no A, B, C, or D or deductive reasoning. If you don't know the answer, you don't know the answer. So this is another reason why studying is so darn important. Mm -hmm. And then let's go through, um, also there are some beer programs and packets out there. I personally got one from Chris Cohen. It was about $90. It was like a 160 some page thing with uh, like four practice, practice exams. Um, and that was beneficial. However, I found when I took the actual exam, very little of what I studied on that was actually on the exam. So, um, you know, especially in the last four to six years, the exam has gotten much more difficult. Um, back in 2008, which is a uh, uh, practice exam that you can find from Cicerone.org uh, that they allow to the public to look at so you can uh, train and practice. Uh, the actual exam these days is nothing like that. So I would take those questions with a grain of salt. Um, and then the beer you're going to be tasting for the overall exam. <laughs> I've spent, like, okay, so I enjoy beer anyway. Like I have a couple <laughs> pints a day to get it with. Like I just am a beer connoisseur. I love it. But the beers I've specifically purchased with the build your own six packs or whatever, or, you know, specifically getting certain styles of beer to really 
uh, zero in on those nuances and those flavor profiles, probably $2,000 over the last two to three years just in those products. And some of those beers will set you back. I mean, if you're not buying, you know, 12 packs of Bud Light or something, like exactly. some, of, some of this craft beer is expensive as far as like Palmer's and just like different Belgian beers that you can't really get everywhere. Exactly. And you know, so. with the exam, they use, you know, Amstel Light's one of their favorite ones. They use a lot of the cheap, you know, <clears throat> American adjunct lagers. Mm -hmm. so that's what they spike it with. It gets a little more in depth and extensive in the advance, but again, we're just talking about certified. Um, so, all in all, with that, I mean, we're looking at about three to four thousand dollars for the overall studying for the certified Cicerone exam from my personal experience. Now, would I recommend it? Absolutely. Um, do I feel so much different and compelled to just go above and beyond and just amazing? Well, no. I'm very happy I got the uh, certification. I did it for myself. Um, I didn't have an employer offering to pay for it. I didn't have an employer, you know, making me get it so I could excel in whatever, you know, branch or field I was mm. in my job. I did it for myself. And yeah, I am happy that I did it. Um, but I'll tell you, you know, it is definitely going to put you up a few extra notches if you are in the beer industry or in the service industry and you really want to excel and increase your knowledge of the craft beer world and industry. When you go to an employer and you put that you're a certified Cicerone on that resume, that is going to bump you up big time in their line for hiring. Um, Definitely. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of knowledge, it takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of discipline to study and to become a certified Cicero. Mm -hmm. And props to all of the other 2,800 uh, ladies and gentlemen out there who are certified. And even the other 85,000 know, certified beer servers out there. Props to you that you took the time to go about and study and uh, excel your knowledge mm -hmm. in this industry and this product. So. Well, I cheated on mine, so. Yeah, right. No, I'm just kidding. I helped, I helped this guy out the whole time, so. <laughs> oh, boy. No, I actually helped open a brewery, local brewery, back in 2012. I've been around beer as well, and beer, wine, and all that fun yep. stuff. Yep, But, um. And, and that goes with wine as well. You know, mm -hmm. this isn't just beer. Uh, there are a handful of uh, certified Psalms in the industry uh, in our local town, mm -hmm. and it's the same thing. They're spending a ton of money on training and yep. all these resources to read and uh, increase and improve their knowledge on the product and uh, tasting all of these different wines to differentiate the seasons and varietals and the years and the grapes and blah, all that stuff. Yep. It's the same thing. Um, and, you know, we're not saying that beer is better than wine or wine is better than beer. These are just certain certifications you're going for to really hone your expertise and skills in mm -hmm. for that particular skill set in your industry and what you're striving to achieve or excel in. And the bottom line, like why we do it, you know, number one, it makes us feel good to yeah. like know more about the things that, you know, that we're selling. And then number two, you definitely make more money when you know more about your products. I mean, in every single restaurant I've worked at, product knowledge is always a huge thing. And I mean, it really is. You're, you'll maybe make, I don't know, 18% gratuity if you didn't know about yeah. like certain wines or beers, but as soon as you like know more about wine and you can sell a two, three hundred dollar bottle of wine and you can, you know, talk about the producer, mm -hmm. you can talk about like the exact region, the sub regions, the history, the culture. I mean, all of a sudden you're making like anywhere from like 40 to 50 percent sometimes just because you're a nice person and you know what you're talking about and people actually really enjoy that because you take pride and passion in it. Yeah, and when yeah. you can go in and change somebody's preconceived perception on a specific style or a beer and then mm -hmm. enlighten them to a new style and they love it, you've automatically changed yep. their perspective on beer or wine or what have you for the rest of their life. Well, it's we, a great experience. Well, we used to, me and him used to say, well, you know, I don't like an amber beer or something like that. Well, how do you know you haven't had a good amber beer? And we, it's still we our still, philosophy. We still say that all the time. You know, there are certain styles that I am not particularly extremely fond of. Mm -hmm. I just haven't had the right one yet. You right. know, some brewery out there is making a stellar, amazing, fantastic uh, 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 version of that style. Mm -hmm. We just haven't had it yet. Yep. You know, that's all there is to it. Um, so all in all, you know, if you want to excel, I would definitely recommend delving in, spending the extra money, the time, the effort. It took me two solid years of studying, like, I mean, pretty much daily studying before I took the exam and passed it. So mm. it's something that you really have to be passionate about and something that uh, you are in love with, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, 
It takes time too. It takes time. Yeah. Anything worthwhile takes time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, from an anonymous, anonymous quote, I mean, beer is more than science, it's an art. So chew on that the next time you're sipping on craft. Boom, boom. Industry boys. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs>